Like his two predecessors, Hoover dedicated his administration to promoting business interests, while for the most part ignoring the desperate state of America's heartland. With the war's closure came the end of government price supports, and foreign need for imported grain and foodstuffs declined. Warehouses and grain elevators were filled to capacity with a lack of sales and increased productivity. Farm income went from $14.5 billion in 1919 to $8.1 billion in 1921. So farmers in the rural sections of the United States never really emerge from the depression that they fall into right around 1920, 1919, 1920. And they stay in a depressed state. And no economy can remain viable if its agricultural sector is perennially depressed. By the time Hoover became president, one farm in four had been sold to pay off debts or taxes. Keeping with his policy of rugged individualism, Hoover signed the Agricultural Marketing Act. This set up the Federal Farm Board, which loaned money to farmers' cooperatives so they could buy, sell, and store surplus crops. The act steadied crop prices, but did not help them rise. This agriculture crisis was an important precursor to the Great Depression. For Herbert Hoover, it was only a preview of what would ultimately lead to his infamy as the president who brought America crashing down.